Um, October 10th, 2017. That was a weird noise. Jesus, that guy's vehicle does not sound healthy at all. Holy piss. Unless, of course, it's some kind of an OEM install and you get a phone call interrupting you, that might change things up a little bit. Be right back. Good day, folks. Jordan here. And uh, let's talk about October 10th, 2017 for a moment in terms of computers. Now, that might not seem like a significant date to most people because, of course, it's just an average day in the life of an American or a British person or an Australian person or a Japanese person. But in sorts of, like, I guess, I don't know how should I put this, um, in terms of computer operating systems, today is a very significant day to some of us. And that is the end of support day for a version of Windows 10 and one of its many infamous updates so far. Specifically, the version 15.11 update, which some of you might not have even considered as being a version of Windows that you would think would be ending support so soon, but that is the case. Today is the end of support day for 15.11. Now, the original Windows 10 ended support back in May. Now it's time for 15.11's turn. Now, I've already got the VM set up, but uh, I'm going to bring it over here on the other screen so that way we can go ahead and get the installation started. Now, of course, I'm just going to do this as a trial-based install just because I don't have a license for my virtual machines to which I can actually um, activate this and run it. Of course, I'd probably just as well run the, you know, the creator's update or something, but, you know. I've also taken out the network adapter so it doesn't connect to the internet and try to do a download of some Windows updates or try to upgrade me to a new version of Windows 10 because it's super annoying, but we, we you get it already. Now, Windows 10 version 15.11 came out in late 2015 as a bug fix update to Windows 10, the initial release. And as we all know, the original version of Windows 10 was rather buggy. Now, my proof as to pr what particular build of Windows 10 I'll be running here in just a second, I will show once I bring up the command prompt because you will soon see. Now, you can do this by doing Shift and F10 to bring up the command prompt, and as you can see, we have Windows 10 uh, version 10.586, which is version 15.11. So, that's how you know. Um, now, of course, my Mac's been kind of stuttery as of late because of, of course, you know, whatever. Also, uh, October 30th, 2015 is also when this was officially released, but it didn't really start updating on some PCs until November or December. So, yeah. So we're just going to go ahead and set this up as a normal VM or computer, for that matter. And uh, the installation process is very similar to that of Windows 10. So I don't really think I'll need to be recording this. So while I, um, while I let this install here for a little sec, um, back when I was running Windows 7 on my main workstation, I, um, I left the initial release of Windows 10 slide because I actually put the initial Windows 10 release on my Lenovo G780, which was my laptop at the time, which was a big 17-inch bulky Ivy Bridge i7-based laptop. And honestly, I regretted it because it was so bad. And you think Mac OS High Sierra is bad. Oh my god, was Windows 10 when it first came out really, really bad. I mean, it was bad. I'm making it sound like it's really bad because it was. In my particular case, I was having problems with standby issues where I would put my laptop to standby, wake it back up, and the entire machine would be completely unresponsive in terms of loading stuff. Now, what I mean by that is... You could still log in, but you couldn't open the start menu, you couldn't open up new folders because it basically unmounted the C drive even though it was technically still there and you could still launch programs to some degree, but you couldn't open the start menu to shut it down, you couldn't open up the explorer to open up like this PC for example because it would just say this I upgraded my workstation from Windows 7 to Windows 10 version 1511 in November of 2015, and it was actually a pretty smooth experience. 
And the OS wasn't exactly the fastest, but then again, I was running on a PC that was from 2008, so it wasn't exactly helping any. But, you know, for what it was, my dual processor workstation seemed to run Windows 10 pretty well. You know, it wasn't perfect, but neither was Windows 10 when it first came out to begin with in general, but neither was 8.1 either. So, you know, it was, it was an all right. It was the right version of Windows. I could get by on it. The performance was very similar to Windows 7 for that matter, so I really didn't mind too much because the hard drive was from 2008 as well, so it wasn't exactly any faster or slower on Windows 10. Well, actually, I guess the fast startup was, you know, decent, but it was no deal breaker or any showstopper for that matter. But uh, no, I should have done a fresh install after I did the upgrade, but I never did. And uh, the Creators Update actually ran pretty decently on that machine as well. In fact, if it wasn't for my iMac, I would actually still be using my XW6600 today, if not my AMD 6-core custom build PC as my main PC, because both of those seem to run very well on Windows 10. But uh, anyway, we'll get on to the rest of the interface here in a little bit. But for right now, we're going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to stop recording and we'll get back to you when we're at the desktop of Windows 10 because, of course, every single Windows 10 installation at this point is basically the same. I don't think I need to be documenting it here on video as it's just going to make the installation take a lot longer. So I'll come back when installation is done and we're at the desktop. Okay, so here we are at the Windows 10 version 1511 desktop. And as you can see, notifications look a slight bit different because, of course, they have a colored icon representing the app. And, of course, the start menu looks a little different, but we'll get onto that here in a little bit. Um, I don't have VMware tools installed, but I don't plan on installing them, so don't mind the laggy graphics. So, the start menu layout is a little different, so let's go ahead and take a look and see what came with Windows 10 uh, 1511 inside of this weird start menu. Of course, I don't know if the camera actually works. I guess we'll see if we can look at my hideous face. Oh yes, it does virtualize the camera. Ah, look, at, look at that, what do you know? You get to look at my messy room. Anyway, so enough of that. Um, what else does it have in here? Oh God, the dreaded Get Office app, which everybody loves. Eh, no thank you. Um, what else is in here? Of course the store, but we'll get to that in a little bit when I connect the network. Um, Groove Music. Which, actually this was discontinued just recently as a matter of fact, where you can actually um, stream music from Microsoft servers, but that actually discontinued only just recently, which is interesting. Uh, Solitaire Collection, which everybody kind of begged for Microsoft to bring back the Solitaire games. Uh, money, News, One OneNote uh, came with Windows 10, still does today. Um, Skype Video. Now... This was before Windows 10 included the Skype app as a universal Windows preview app. So the weird thing is, and let me just show this to you, they actually did it with two separate apps to try and like combine like messaging and Skype together. It was sort of a weird mishmash where um, you could actually send or see text messages from your Windows phone on the, on the computer if it was running Windows 10 Mobile, of course, and of course Skype Video went through that one thing. Of course, you just as well download the full desktop Skype and still use it that way while they fixed up the UWP app. That's how we did it back in the day. We actually still use the desktop version of Skype on Windows 10. So uh, what other things can we take a look at in here? We could probably take a look at the calendar because, of course, the calendar's probably changed a little bit. And uh, I'm just going to go into the calendar here. So I'm not sure how different this looks comparative to the more modern calendars, but that's what that looks like. In fact, one app that looks significantly different is the settings app. So let's take a look at that first. And while we're at it, we'll also increase the resolution of the display to 1920 by 1080, because that is the resolution of which I would like to do. I would like to display this app at. But uh, anyway, so there was no static sidebar like there is in the create in the anniversary update and later. In fact, this is the OG setting S app when it comes to Windows 10. And uh, there's no icons on the side. The resolution's not front and center. There was no, uh, like, night shift thingy. There was no apps menu that was underneath the system thing. You had to go to the apps and features panel. There was no Xbox game mode and other things like that. This was the original settings app. And, in fact, the update and security thing looks significantly different as well. And, uh, of course, I'm not activated, so I can't exactly, you know, deal with that right now. 
But, um, yeah. Anyway, um, let's see. There's the Cortana interface. Of course, Cortana really hasn't changed much. Well, what else is different? Um, the calculator, I know, is probably going to be changed in the full creator's update. Let's take a look at OneNote real quick. Let's see what comes built in. Uh, jot down things to remember. Notes are always saved automatically. Of course, you have to have a Microsoft account in order to use that. One thing that's different is down here, the little notification area. The look has changed ever since the uh, anniversary update where they put the icon from down here over to the other side of the clock and just push the clock over, which I think was a much more smart design, I guess. And of course, uh, in the newer stuff, you get the night shift mode and other stuff. Well, you know, it's not called night shift. It's like night light or something like that. I use Mac, so I can't exactly tell you. Um... Sway, which is sort of like some kind of Microsoft publisher, except it's free or something. I don't know what the point of it is, but that's what that's for. And, of course, Xbox, because, of course, Microsoft. So, it came with version 9.9.30030.0000. So, yeah. And I believe this still used the classic personalization menu options yeah they do so you can tell now the original windows 10 did not give you the c also and these options down here just like classic windows they didn't give you those in fact it was just this themes thing and these options up there and that was it that was all you got and in fact actually in the original windows 10 you could not change the color of the title bar on this one you could but it was all the colors like you had to have them all on or all off so, for example, you can have the colors on the title bar, but you can't turn them off independently from the task bar like you can in the creator's update and the anniversary update. So, that's kind of a love-hate thing if you want the colors showing on your interface or not. So, overall, what are my thoughts on this version of Windows? Well, since I used it on my main system ever since it came out back in, I think, November. Like, yeah, November. Uh, sorry, I, I spaced out on the installation or the... <laughs> the deployment date, sorry. Honestly speaking, it was a pretty solid release of Windows 10. Obviously, it was a much, much more stable and, I guess, secure version of the original Windows 10, which was not a bad thing. And it definitely cleaned up a lot of the bugs that Windows 10 had when it was first launched. And, uh, I would say that it was a pretty solid release. I actually really liked using it. It was fast. It was stable, it worked really well, and I never really had much any or I never had much issue with it at all. But looking at it now in 2017, it's definitely feeling stale, and I like the features and the look of the anniversary update and the creators update and the soon-to-be fall creators update with the fluent design. So it really makes this version of Windows 10 seem dated because especially um, if I must be honest, the, the dated settings app, and there's a bunch of things too, like for example, um, if I come in here, this definitely looks dated because, of course, this now goes through the settings app, although that's not necessarily a bad thing that they have the standalone dialog box. But there's just a lot of unpolished things about this particular build that really makes me glad that they updated to the later builds that we have now because it just feels so much better. Now, from a Mac user's point of view, which I am a Mac user, um... It is a nice operating system, and definitely in the retrospect, if I had to use it, I would use it. Well, Windows 10 as a whole, because I used to use Windows 10 until I switched to a Mac, but if I were to switch back to Windows 10, you know, I could use it. I'm not complaining, but we've definitely come a long way ever since uh, 1511, so um, I will definitely give it that. Um, in terms of time constraints, I'm not going to take a look at the online portions of Windows 10 1511 unless I'm specifically asked to because, or is specifically requested because I just don't have a lot of time to sit down and do this sort of stuff right now. So my apologies for those who are actually looking forward to checking some of the stuff out. I, I'm sorry, I, I just, I don't have the time for that right now. So um, yeah, so um, hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh, farewell Windows 10 version 1511. You served us well and it's time that your legacy lives on in the past. So appreciate you guys taking the time to watch. I'll see you all in the next one. Ciao.